Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled AB Game from the Code Chef November 2018 Cookoff Challenge. The problem states two players, let's call them A and B, are playing a game on a row of cells. A cell may contain the character A, contain the character B, or be empty. Each character may only be moved from a cell CI to a cell CF if cell CF and all cells between CI and CF are currently empty. The leftmost first character may only be moved to the right, and the second character may only be moved to the left, the next character to the right, and so on. Each character may be moved any number of times, including zero. The players alternate turns. Player A starts. On each turn, the current player must choose a cell containing their own character, A for player A and B for player B, and move it to a different cell. This cell may be chosen arbitrarily as long as the rules described above are satisfied. The first player that cannot move a character loses. And the question asks us uh, to output the winner of this game. Uh, and the constraints of this problem, uh, the number of test cases T is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 5. The length of the string that represents the cells, the A's, the B's, and the empty spaces is going to be no greater than 10 to the 5th characters. And it also tells us that the sum of all of our strings that represent these characters uh, is not going to exceed 10 to the 6. So let's take a look at the examples that Coach F provided us with to uh, see if we can get a better understanding of this problem, what it's asking for. So here are the three examples. The first number here is just T, the number of test cases. And then as you can see, each line contains a configuration of A's, B's, and empty cells. Uh, and so to recap what the question states is that uh, on each turn, uh, A is going to start and then B will go and they'll alternate. Uh, they can take any one of their characters and move it uh, either to the left or the right depending on whether it's an odd character or an even character. So uh, the first character moves to the right and the second character moves to the left. And then the third moves to the right, fourth moves to the left. Um, and so for our first game here, A is obviously only has one option. Uh, that individual is just going to move this character to the right because that's the only option and then B won't have any moves so A will be the winner. So the final configuration for the first game will be as follows. Uh, for the second game A has two options. A can move uh, this character to the second spot or to the third spot but if, the, uh, if A moves it to the third spot uh, B won't have any moves, so obviously that's the optimal move, and A will win this game as well. So the final configuration for the second game will be as follows. And the third game is the most interesting of all of them. Obviously A has multiple options, and regardless of what A does, B will at least get uh, one move. And if you work through all the different possibilities, uh, B is going to win. And we'll, we'll work through how you can figure that out, but basically... Uh, a, if even if A moves, uh, you know, one to the right or uh, two to the right, B will still have a move, and basically B can just mimic whatever A does in order to get the last move, and then A will lose. Uh, so the final configuration um, could be a couple different things, but one of them could be this. So if A moved two spots to the right, then B could just move two spots to the left with this character, and then it would end up looking like this, and A wouldn't have any moves. Uh, so this is all great. Uh, hopefully the problem makes sense now. So let's take a look at a more complicated example to motivate how we can solve this. So here is a more complicated example. And the first thing to note about this problem is that we should be processing each of our characters, our non-empty characters, uh, in pairs. And that's because the first character moves to the right, and then the second character moves to the left, so on and so forth which means that you're not going to ever be able to move the uh, characters that are moving to the right past the next character that's moving to the left. So basically, the first two characters here are going to be converging towards each other, regardless of how they're moved, if it's one spot at a time or multiple spots. The second two characters together are going to be moving to each other, uh, so on and so forth. So the way we should be thinking about this is sort of as follows. So I've color-coded color these in pairs. Uh, the reds go together, the bees go together, and they just sort of alternate colors. Um, so this is the first step uh, that you should you should make note of this. Hopefully it's it's um, pretty after either immediately you can recognize this or playing around with a couple examples. It, it should become pretty clear that this is the case. 
And the next thing to note is that when we have a pair where each of the characters are the same, we know that this is going to contribute the number of spaces, the empty spaces between these two characters to that player's number of moves. And that's because the goal of this game is to have the uh, maximum number of moves. That's basically a different way of stating the problem. You want to not run out of moves, and therefore you want to take as many moves as possible. Um, therefore, when B is moving to uh, itself here, and when A is moving to itself, it's never going to move more than one at a time. So we can sort of jot down um, the moves for A and the moves for B guaranteed based on sort of the pairs that have equal um, characters to each other. Uh, we can just count the number of dots in between. So that's pretty straightforward. And the, the last part of the problem, the last insight you need, is the trickiest. But once you have this insight, it's um, not too bad to solve. And the last insight is that we need to figure out how to deal with uh, the pairs where uh, you have an A and a B. And so you can see here that's the first pair and the last pair. There's two spaces in between this A and B, and there's three spaces in between this A and B. And it's not immediately clear whether A should be uh, jumping over uh, to sort of block B from getting moves, or if A should move one at a time, and then B should mimic that. Um, but what you might note is that this problem is actually... Uh, a very famous problem, which is NIMS problem. Uh, so if you're not familiar with NIMS problem, I'll leave in the description, I'll leave a link in the description down below. But basically, uh, very quickly, the problem stated is that you're given a stack of coins or uh, stones, I guess more traditionally, uh, but it was hard to find a picture of <laughs> stacks of stones. So we're using stacks of coins here. And the way it works is that you have two players and they alternate turns and you have one action per, t per turn. And that is you have to remove up to one or more than one number of coins uh, from a single stack. And the goal of the game is to uh, it always be able to remove one or more coins. So if all of the coins get removed, you lose the game. Um, and, and you weren't the last one to draw sort of the last coin or the last pile. And this game, Nim's game, is exactly what we have if we ignore the pairs where we have two Bs or two As. Whenever we have an A and a B, this is the exact problem. So we can only remove uh, sort of a, a move or a space from one of the stacks in quotation marks. Um, and we can we can remove one or we can remove up to the whole pile or the whole stack. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details on how to solve NIM's problem and sort of the theory behind it. If you guys want a video on that, leave a comment down in the comment section down below, and, and I can make a video for that if you guys want. Um, but the solution is, is really simple, and it's that you just take the XOR of all of the um, heights, I guess, of the stacks, and if it's not equal to zero, if the X or of all of these heights is not equal to zero, then A wins, or the first player wins, which in our game is A. And uh, if it is equal to zero, that means that B wins, the second player. Uh, so basically what this problem comes down to is uh, we have to count uh, the A slash B moves, so figure out what these values are, and then also count the A, B stacks. So here it would be two and then three. Uh, and then if A is not equal to B, uh, the greater one wins. And that's because due to the fact that uh, we're going to resolve it by looking at sort of the stacks that are in the NIMS game, um, if you've got additional moves over the other player, those additional moves can put you in the winning position. So it only takes one extra move to change from a losing position to a winning position. Uh, so... Whenever A is not equal to B, uh, we know that whoever has the greater amount is going to win the game. And if they are equal to each other, then we just need to look at sort of the NIM sum uh, and, and figure out who would win the NIMS game, and that will be the winner. Uh, so, like I said, if you haven't heard of NIMS problem, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And if you'd like to see a video on that, let me know. I can make one. Um, but yeah, that's the last insight that you need in order to solve this problem. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at our code.
Oh, and there's actually, before we look at our code, there's one thing to note is that uh, there's sort of one corner case, and that's if we don't have a pair at the end. So if we only have one sort of the start of a pair at the end, uh, we need to make sure that we count and add this to uh, either A or B, uh, the number of moves. So in this case, we would have to add four moves to A. So now let's take a look at our code. So here is our full C++ solution. At the top here, we're just reading in T the number of test cases. Then we have a while loop around the number of test cases. Uh, for each test case, we read in our string, and then we're going to do some initialization. So I is going to be sort of an index that is going to represent the start of one of our pairs. Um, A and B is going to be the number of moves for A and B respectively. And nim is just a variable for keeping track of the XOR of our stacks, per se. And here is a uh, lambda that's just going to be used for adding uh, the number of spaces in between uh, our pairs when we have an AA pair or a BB, a BB, a BB pair. And uh, then in our next loop, we are looping through uh, with our variable J, which we're going to use as the second index in a pair. And this is going to loop from 0 to uh, the length of our string. And if we are at a character that's a period, which is representing an empty space, we're just going to skip because we don't care about it. And then the next thing we check is if we are at either an A or a B, and we currently haven't set the beginning of our pair, uh, that means uh, this is the first element in our pair. So set I equal to our current index, and then continue to loop. And then the next time we hit a non-period uh, character, and i is set to a non-negative one index. We're then going to come in here and we're going to check, are the two characters equal to each other? If so, add the corresponding number of spaces in between the two to either a or b. Uh, if not, which means we have an a and a b, then we do an xor uh, on our nim uh, to keep track of what is the xor value. And then once we're done this, we reset i to negative 1 so we can find our next pair and we continue this until the end of the loop. And as I mentioned right before we came to this, uh, if at the end of our for loop i is not set to negative 1, that means we're in the middle of finding a pair. So we never found sort of the end of the pair, so we have to make sure that we add um, the number of spaces until the end of the string to the corresponding uh, a or b number of moves. And then once we've done this, we have all the information we need to determine the winner. So what we do is we check uh, if A is equal to B, that means we need to go to Nim's game to figure out who won. And if Nim is not equal to zero, then the first player, in this case A wins, else B wins. And otherwise, uh, if A is greater than B, then A wins. And if uh, B is greater than A, then B wins. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this made sense. It was a pretty neat problem. And uh, yeah, props to the uh, problem maker. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for this problem is going to be big O of t times s, where s is the length of our string, because we have t test cases. And for each one of those test cases, obviously, we have to loop through uh, our full string. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.